Stay tuned now for Robert Young, starring in Father Knows Best, which follows this listening reminder. Tomorrow evening on the NBC Radio Network, you'll enjoy the Bob Hope Show, as film star Tyrone Power joins the program as special guest in an hilarious takeoff on a motion picture. As well as guest Tyrone Power, the Bob Hope Show will feature singing star Margaret Whiting and the music of Les Brown's Band of Renown. Later tomorrow evening, listen to the scintillating Phil Harris and Alice Faye show, a riot of laughs from beginning to end. Listen and laugh tomorrow evening when it's time for both the Bob Hope Show and the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. And now, hear Father Knows Best on NBC. (laughs) Now listen to Father Knows Best, transcribed starring Robert Young as Father. Welcome to Springfield and another half-hour visit with the folks in the white frame house on Maple Street. Sit back and enjoy life with the Andersons, Kathy, Bud, Betty, Margaret, and Jim, as the head of this typical American household again sets out to prove that father knows best. There was a good bit of excitement and no little dismay stirred up at the white frame house on Maple Street at noon today. On the surface, things seemed fairly normal and peaceful. About the only indication of anything out of the ordinary was expressed in a casual remark of Jim's as he entered the kitchen. Like this. Hello, honey. What's uh, the matter with Bud? With Bud? He's out in front, leaning against the mailbox, staring off into space. Oh, I didn't even know he was home from school yet. The strange thing is that he didn't budge an inch when I said lunch was probably ready. That is strange. Uh, Honey, would you fill the water glasses? The pitcher's right there. Oh, yeah, okay. Usually when I mention the word food to Bud, I quickly jump to one side so as not to get caught in a stampede. (laughs) Well, I wish he'd come in and eat. Everything's ready. Betty? Kathy? Bud mumbled something about waiting for the mail carrier. I wonder what crazy thing he sent in for this time. How much is going to cost me? Betty? Kathy, lunch. Wouldn't be so bad if he didn't always have everything sent COD. Sometimes I think COD stands for clobber old dad. <laughs> oh, and that reminds me. I sent your old leather chair out to be recovered, but it won't cost much. You did what? Well, it was all sunken down in the oh, middle. Margaret, I... I spent 20 years getting that chair to fit me. <laughs> Now, just when it's getting nicely broken in... Broken down, you mean. It was a disgrace. You'll have to tell me one thing, though. You want it done in brown again, or would you like red leather this time? Well, if it has to be done, I've always sort of liked the idea of red leather. Oh, that's good, because that's what I told him to do. Oh, you did? Well, as long as this is your chair, I I want you to be happy with it. (laughs) Betty? Don't scream, Mother. I'm coming. But don't fix much lunch for me. I'm getting so fat, I'm positively, hello, Father, ugly. (laughs) I wish you wouldn't refer to me as Father Ugly. (laughs) What makes you think you're fat? Well, my stars, I've gone up from 111 pounds to 113. Horrors. (laughs) We'll have to widen the doorways so you can get through. What's Kathy doing? Well, I can tell you, but you'll never in the world believe it. With her, I'd believe anything. She's upstairs cleaning Bud's room for him. Cleaning Bud's room? I withdraw my statement. (laughs) She actually is. I mean, actually. What's going on around here, anyway? Bud turning down food, Kathy cleaning his room. Strange things are happening. She says Bud's paying her for it. Now I've heard everything. Maybe I should have stayed in town until things blow over. Well, both of those children had better get in here and eat or they'll never make it back to school in time. Kathy? I'm coming! Oh, don't give me any of that salad, Mother. The dressing's fattening. Oh, piffle. Eat what's on your plate. I'm not running a restaurant. Hurry up, Kathy! I'm coming! 
Hi, Daddy. Hello, kitten. You sound pretty cheerful today. I ought to. I'm getting rich. Well, good. I'm glad we've got one wealthy member in this family. How much is Bud paying you? All the bubble gum you can chew? Heck no. A dollar a week. A dollar? My gosh, he doesn't make a whole lot more than that himself. <laughs> what does that drugstore job pay him? Two, three dollars a week? Well, I don't know. If you ask me, he's missing a few of his marbles. Well, I wish he'd come in before he misses his lunch, too. Kitten, are you sure Bud's paying you a dollar? Yep. Pass the jelly, Betty. You must know where the body's buried. Huh? How did you talk Bud into this dollar deal? I didn't talk him into it. It was his idea. Are you sure? Uh-huh. He said he needed to keep out of a higher income tax bracket. <laughs> <laughs> that he should worry about. Betty, how about a cinnamon roll? Don't you realize that each one of those rolls is simply an utterly crammed full of carbohydrates? Really? I thought those were raisins. <laughs> Father, please. Hey, Mom, what time does that Don mailman get here anyway? Mm, maybe he's already been here. And didn't leave anything? Could be. I better sit down and eat. Oh, I'm not hungry. Just give me a couple of those rolls and some ham and potato salad and beans and jelly and stuff. <laughs> Poor kid hasn't got any appetite at all. Where's my dollar, bud? I can't give it to you yet. I'd like some milk, please. I got your room all clean, and I want my dollar. You'll get it as soon as my money comes in. As soon as what money comes in? From the government. Those watermelon pickles there, I'll try a couple. From the government? No wonder they can't get the budget balanced. I want my dollar, bud. Look, shrimp, if you don't pipe down, I won't let you talk on the tape recorder. Tape re... What tape recorder? Well, I, I haven't got it yet. I just sent in for it a couple of days ago. Uh, just a minute, bud. How are you getting all this money? Exactly what kind of an arrangement do you have with the government? Well, you see, Claude Mesner and I... I might have known Claude was mixed up in this some way. Claude and I got to talking about income tax, and Claude said that I'd have to start making out an income tax thing now that I'm working steady at the drugstore. I see. You don't have to file an income tax return, stupid. I'm working, aren't I? I've got income, haven't I? What income? Those two or three dollars you get for burning toasted cheese sandwiches at the drugstore? <laughs> Wait, let's uh, hear Bud's story. This intrigues me. Well, I'll gladly listen to anyone who's got a system whereby the government pays you instead of you paying them. <laughs> well, I just wish you'd brought this up before March 15th. I could have used it. Well, the way I Where's figured... my dollar? Will you pipe down? Ah, oh, turn blue. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sonny Boy, this is going to be quite a shock to you. But the income tax is something you have to pay, not get. Not the way Claude figures it. I may have been misjudging this boy. Go on. According to Claude, I ought to get a refund of a... Well, uh, wait a minute. I got the blank in my pocket here. I'd love to see it. It's kind of wrinkled up. Where are we now? Oh, oh yeah, right here. I get a refund of $1,071.28. What? I'm going to raise my price to $2. <laughs> I told Claude I thought that was awful high, but he said as long as I have it coming, I might as well take it. Uh, just how did Claude arrive at that figure? Well, he just worked it out the regular way. Enter line 6 on line X and subtract line 2 and all that. I know, but exactly how did Claude get that figure? That's what I want to know. He ate too many starches. <laughs> All right. You can save that for the sophomore spring follies. Let's see that blank, bud. Well, Claude's got it all worked out. See, here's drugstore income here. Yeah. $32.90. That includes tips. I see. Claude says they can be rough on you if you cheat on your tips. He's right. Then here's that $100 savings bond Aunt Maddie gave me for Christmas. You put that under income? Well, it came in. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, what's this item here, bud? Loss from storm, 298. Oh, that's my baseball mitt. I lost it in a storm. 
<laughs> oh, I see. Never did find that thing. Anyway, my net income comes to $128.28. See that? Yeah. Now, over here, I put myself down for an exemption. And right here, I put Kathy down as a dependent. Kathy? <laughs> oh, boy, I'm a dependent. Don't I know it? <laughs> now then, we turn back over Wait here. Wait a minute. How do you figure that you can claim Kathy as a dependent? Well, she's dependent on me for her salary. That's why I hired her. <laughs> it was Claude's idea. I don't doubt that at all. He pointed out that even though it cost me a little money, it was worth several hundred bucks to me in the long run. I'm going to raise my price to three dollars. Don't start getting grabby or I'll drop you as a dependent. Well, let's see now. With two exemptions, that's $1,200. Yeah, that's the way Claude has it. Right there, see? Mm hmm And your net income is only $128.72, which leaves a difference of $1,071.28. Right. Now you haven't figured any actual tax here. Well, of course not. I shouldn't have to pay tax on money they owe me. Well, no, I... I guess you're right. Do they send that money in cash or check? I don't know. They've never sent me any. <laughs> Betty, wouldn't you eat just a little something? An apple or a glass of milk? Oh, I haven't time now, Mother. I've got to get back to school early this noon. I've decided I'll settle for 35 cents. Cash. <laughs> Look, I can't change it now. It'll throw my whole income tax off. Well, how soon will I get it? As soon as the mailman brings it. I'll go out and check him again. Uh, wait a minute, bud. There's a few things you ought to know about income tax. And this is a good time to learn them. Claude told me everything. Oh, sure. In the first place, even if you were supposed to file a return... But I am supposed to. No, you're not. You didn't make $600. I will when you add in my $1,000 refund. <laughs> <laughs> you can't count that. But even if you were supposed to, and even if it was correct, which it isn't... What? You couldn't get a refund without first sending it in. But I did send it in. And in the second place, you can't list Kathy as a depend. <coughs> what did you say? You sent it in? Sure. You actually sent it in? Yeah. To the district director of internal revenue. Oh, no. <laughs> Isn't that the right place? Oh, bud... Bud, why don't you check with me before you do these things? <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if they sent him that refund? <laughs> Margaret, this is no laughing matter. Do you realize his name is the same as mine? Wait a minute, did you sign it as Bud Anderson? Of course not, James C. Anderson. Oh, me. Well, did you put the junior on? Oh, Claude thought I ought to leave that off. Sounded too kiddish. <laughs> Hooray for Claude Oh, Jim, what are you so worried about? They can see that it's all a mistake Sure, but it's going to be a pretty suspicious-looking kind of a mistake They'll get two returns from James C. Anderson, both the same address Both claiming Kathy as a dependent Both claiming James as an exemption And one of them asking for a thousand-dollar refund <laughs> Well, you can explain it all, can't you? Sure but are they going to believe it? They're checking everything that looks the least bit suspicious now. Well, I think you're just making a mountain out of a moleskin. Nothing will come of it. Oh, no? Gosh, Dad, you don't think they'll throw me in jail, do you? No, of course not. But all the red tape I'll have to go through explaining this... Mm, Kathy, go see who that is. Okay. Gosh, what am I going to do when my tape recorder gets here? Just send it back. And after this, don't send in for any more things until you've got the money to pay for it. Well, I thought I would have. And don't send in for anything until after you've checked with me. I just hope I don't get arrested. You won't, bud. Well, that's what they get all the big gangsters on, income tax. <laughs> well, you're not a gangster. I hope Claude doesn't sue me. Why should he sue you? I promised him $10 for making out my income tax. <laughs> $10? Well, sure, you pay a man to do yours, don't you? Well, yes, but... How much do you pay him? 
25, but You he... ought to get Claude and save 15 bucks. Daddy? Yes, kitten? There's a man here. He wants to see you. See me? Who is it? I don't know. He said he wanted to ask you something about your tax. Tax? Oh, no, Margaret, he's here already. Oops, Bud. Bud, come back here. Don't run down in the... Bud! Act two of Father Knows Best in just a moment. One week from tonight, all of Hollywood's most glamorous personalities will gather for the fabulous Academy Award presentations of the motion picture industry. And NBC will be on hand to bring you a complete and exclusive report of the proceedings of the 26th annual presentation of the Academy Awards. You'll hear Donald O'Connor as master of ceremonies of the presentations. You'll hear the five nominated songs sung by your favorite singers. You'll hear the acceptance speeches of the Oscar winners. Tune to NBC next Thursday evening for the exclusive NBC broadcast of the Academy Awards. Who will win the Oscars? Listen next Thursday on this NBC station and learn the answer to that question. Well, it looks as though the long arm of the Internal Revenue Department has found its way into the white frame house on Maple Street. Right now, James Jr., who filled out an income tax form in a fairly unorthodox manner, has taken refuge in the basement, while James Sr. prepares to go into the living room and talk to the man who has come to see him about his tax. Like this. Well, dear, you can't keep the man waiting all night. Go in there and talk to him. I'm going, I'm going. I just want to, well, organize my thoughts, make a good presentation of all this. All you have to do is just tell the truth. I know, but in this case, the truth just sounds like a flimsy alibi for a clumsy try at getting away with something. Oh, it does not. You're just building this up in your own mind. You haven't done anything wrong. I know that, Margaret. I know that. But it's a funny thing. I almost feel like I have. And I'm afraid I'm going to go in there acting suspicious. You better go, Daddy. The man said he was in a hurry. Okay, okay. Where's the uh, copy of that income tax blank that Bud sent in? I think Bud took it down to the basement with him. Well, would you get it for me? It might be a good idea to send Bud in there, too. One look at Bud will explain this mix-up quicker than anything I can say. <laughs> All right, I'll get Bud. You go in there and start talking. Okay. Can I come too, Daddy? No, you wait there. See if you can get my dollar from him. Uh-huh. Well, uh, how do you do, sir? How do you do? Are you Mr. Anderson? Uh, yes? I hate to bother you at lunchtime, Oh, but that's I... all right. Perfectly all right. Well, I know it's pretty hard to catch you fellows, so catch. I... I... <laughs> I wasn't planning on running away. Oh, I know that. It, what I meant was... Actually, that... there's a simple explanation to this, Mr... Uh... Haggerty, and I think I have one of my cards here. Uh, never mind. This whole thing is really a pretty funny story. <laughs> oh? <laughs> yes, you see, a... Young friend of my son's, uh, Claude Messner, appointed himself as my son's personal business manager. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> uh, now then, Mr. Anderson, about your tax. Well, that's uh, what I'm coming to. Oh? Uh, this Claude filled out the blank, and the way he figured... Well, wait, I can explain this better by showing you the blank. I I've got a copy of it. I'll go get it. Uh, well, look, Mr. Anderson... Don't worry, I'll be back. I'm not running away. I know, but as I... As a matter of fact, I want you to meet Bud, because... Actually, he's more concerned with this than I am. Oh, he is? I thought you were the one No, who... you see, there are two James C. Andersons, junior and senior. That's the whole trouble. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Well, all right, but I wish you'd hurry. Mother, I forgot my purse. Do you know where I left... Oh, excuse me, I didn't know anyone was here. It's quite all right. Does anyone know you're here? Oh, yes, I, I was just talking to Mr. Anderson. I didn't mean to make so much fuss. I just wanted to talk to someone about the chair. Oh, you mean the leather chair we're having done over? <laughs> yes, I just wanted to know what kind of tax you want it decorated with. <laughs> tax? 
Yes, there were bronze-headed ones on it before, but I think brass would look better with the red leather. Well, you'll have to ask Father. I could have phoned, but I was in the neighborhood, and I thought you could get a better idea if you could see the tax yourself. Yes, well, I'm sure Father will be right. Oh, there's my purse. Look, mister, I'm in a hurry. Would you give Father these letters? They just came. Well, yes, all right. Thanks, just loads. You're a doll. Uh... Come on, Bud. He's not going to arrest you. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Well, here we are, Mr. Haggerty. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Yes, uh-huh. Uh, this is my son, James uh, Jr. Oh, yes. So this is the young man who's going to get the chair, eh? What? <laughs> Bud, come back here! What's the matter with him? <laughs> I'm, uh... I'm afraid your little joke was too much for him. What little joke? About the chair. He's quite emotionally upset over this whole deal. Mm. He must be an extremely delicate child. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. You should see him eat sometime. Well, now, let's get this straight. Just which one of you is getting the chair? <laughs> Your wife told me it was your leather chair, and then you said you wanted to call your son because he was more wait, concerned wait, with wait it. Wait, wait a minute. What did you say, leather chair? Yes, yeah, certainly. I'm not in the wrong house, am I? <laughs> you, you're the one who's redoing our leather chair? Well, certainly. Who did you think I was? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry this has gotten so complicated. I merely dropped by to ask you whether you want it decorated with bronze or brass tax. Tax? <laughs> Mr. Haggerty, excuse me for laughing, but we thought you were from the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Internal Revenue? It's, it's too long a story to explain, but on account of you, my son is probably holed up in the darkest corner of the basement... Believing he's a fugitive from justice. Very amusing. Well, now, how about it? Do you want bronze or brass? What's that? Do you want bronze or brass tax? Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> what will? Sure. Oh, you don't know what a relief this will be to Bud. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to get straightened out about the chair, Mr. Hackett? <laughs> uh, no. No, I've got all the information I'm going to get. I can see that. Well, fine. N uh, nice to have met you. Yes. Uh, oh, here's your mail. Your daughter handed it to me. Oh, fine. Thank you. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Haggerty. Goodbye, Mr. Anderson. Margaret! Margaret! Yes, dear? <laughs> Was that a good joke on us? That wasn't an income tax man. That was the furniture man. Mr. Haggerty, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, I couldn't imagine what was going on in here. Bud shot out of here looking white as a ghost. He called Claude on the phone and told him he'd better get out of town. <laughs> oh, no. Where's uh, Bud now? I don't know. He ran out the back door. Well, I hope he hasn't gone out of town, too. He left without paying me my dollar. Look, kitten, uh, you'd better just write that off as a bad debt. But he promised it to me. Well, I'll pay it to you this time. But after this, don't make any more deals with Bud unless you check with me first. Would you like your room clean for a dollar? <laughs> no, no, thanks. You can use me as a dependent. I'd rather not hear any more about that. <laughs> Coast clear? Huh? Oh, hi, bud. Come on in. I saw him leave. What happened? Do you think we've got a chance, Dad? Oh, sure. I took care of that baby. I told him off, but good. Of course, we might have to slip down to Mexico, lay low for a few months. Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> He's just kidding you, bud. That man was just here to see about recovering your father's leather chair. Leather chair? Mm-hmm. Is that the chair he was talking about? <laughs> That's all it was, bud. Jumping catfish, boy, what a relief. 
What do you have there, Jim? Some mail? Huh? Oh, yeah. I guess uh, Betty brought it in. Let's see. Uh, here's uh, one for you, bud. From the Ajax Mail Order House. Oh, that's about my tape recorder. And this one is... Oh, my gosh. This is from the Internal Revenue Office. Huh? I was just thinking you still don't have that little problem solved. Dad... How far is it to Mexico? <laughs> Before Daddy goes any place, I want my money first. Well, open the letter and see what it says, Jim, before you start building this up into another big thing. Yeah, 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 you're right. What's it say, Dad? Well, wait till I look. What's in your letter, bud? Oh, I forgot to look. Well, I'll be darned. Well, what does the Director of Internal Revenue say, dear? <laughs> well, what does he say? <laughs> uh, he says, please send me COD 1 number 602 tape recorder. What? <laughs> Bud sent the order to them by mistake. But, but what about the income blank? I just got it back. I must have sent it to the Ajax mail order house. <laughs> Dear, if I may quote the children, this is sure a crazy mixed up house. <laughs> The Andersons will be back in just a moment. Again, let me remind you about the exclusive NBC radio broadcast of the Academy Awards next Thursday evening. Your host will be motion picture star Richard Carlson, and he'll describe this fabulous night of nights as the spectacle unfolds. On stage in Hollywood, the NBC microphones will pick up the voices of the stars all America loves as they present golden Oscars to 25 winners. And from New York and Philadelphia, you'll hear the voices of winners who may be in those cities. Only once each year is so much talent gathered together for one broadcast. Hear the excitement, tension, and surprises of the Academy Awards ceremonies next Thursday evening on this same NBC station. Well, at last, the hectic noon hour is over. All the mistakes that were made finally neutralized each other, and the children are now on their way back to school. And Jim is about to depart for the office. Like this. Well, I can get back to work now and get a little rest. <laughs> well, we certainly had a comedy of errors going full blast here. I don't see how Bud can get so many things mixed up so completely. He must practice nights. <laughs> well, he's a boy. I don't know where he gets that ability. Certainly not from me. Well, I'd better be going. Oh, wait a minute, dear. That might be for you. I hope not. Hello? Yes, that's right. Oh? Oh, I see. Well, well, just a minute. I'll ask him. Dear, this is about your tax. Tell him to put the brass-headed ones in. Uh, no, this is the Internal Revenue Office. What? My gosh, what have I done now? They want you to drop by there and pay them some more money. More money? Mm-hmm. When you send in your return, you apparently enclose that letter I asked you to mail to Aunt Mattie. Huh? They put a stamp on it so you owe them three cents. <laughs> again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Father Knows Best is an NBC Radio Network production in cooperation with Cavalier Enterprises. In our cast were Ted Donaldson as Bud, Gene Vanderpile, Rhoda Williams, Helen Strom, and Parley Bear. Father Knows Best is based on characters created by Ed James, written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers, directed by Arthur Jacobson, and transcribed in Hollywood. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Play Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards on the NBC Radio Network.